This is going to be your guide to using Slitherwing in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So, Iron Moth sucks, what about the past Paradox form for Volcarona? Well, it doesn't have, like, stats that scream insane, but that's actually a really good thing because it means the devs gave it tools to work with. For Paradox Pokemon, that's kind of shocking. We have Bulk Up, Leech Life, Body Press, and Morning Sun, all on the same Pokemon with Bug Fighting. That means Leech Life Stab on Setup and Body Press for that extra damage on Stab into a defense boosting Pokemon that also sustains. That's actually strong and it has a 135 attack so the Pokemon turns on real quick. And there's a couple of ways you can look at this. Maybe you just go max defense. You still want that adamant nature since you're getting a lot out of that 135 attack. And it means like, oh, two bulk ups. And now you're really scary on both the leech life and the body press. But then you just have a crazy amount of defense. Unfortunately, you can't push it far enough to where the impish nature then overtakes the attack and you can boost your energy into it. And maybe this is the secret. This is... The ugliest thing I could ever imagine on a physical attacker, but Generation 9 is so broken, maybe this is actually just the best set, because now you can throw on the booster energy and you are just a dedicated defense tank that is now very difficult to deal with that only gets more difficult to deal with. So you're going to be vulnerable to special attacks, especially without any investment, but then you play this Pokemon like an anti-physical Pokemon remove the opponent's special threats you depending on like how you scout their team in the battle spot or battle stadium you just run this into it and if they only have physical pokemon left you win the game the evs and item are mostly going to be about how much the metagame hates setup there's a lot of taunt if there's a lot of trick choice items then you just want more attack because they're most likely not going to predict the setup on the slither wing initially so you get a bulk up and then they go oh now I need to taunt you, or oh, now I need to switch into my taunt Pokemon. So if you get this and then one bulk up, you're a plus one 135 attack Pokemon using stab. You are now very scary, even with that little bit of extra bulk, and you're not a one hit KO in a lot of situations. So that's going to be really good right there. Um, Citrus Berry is just going to kind of give you that extra survivability as well as you're bulking up, as you're getting into it for that first setup. Or maybe it lets you greed. It lets you greed that second bulk up. It lets you, you know, morning sun for that 75%. And now you're just completely just stacked because max hit points, not max defense, still still has some vulnerability. 85, 79, not great. But after that first bulk up, and then you're just like naturally sustaining while possibly one-shotting people. All right, you're, you're going to be in a good situation. And then body press kind of has the same thing. Just kind of coverages out and you're doing really well. So the setup here is really good. Uh, Terra Bug. Terra Bug is surprisingly good as well. You don't pick up a crazy amount of common weaknesses. It might also kind of mitigate some kind of other weakness you're going into. And then Stab, Leech Life, plus one, 135 Adamant. Oh, that's KOs. Oh, you're just getting half your health back naturally while attacking. And then this is weird because, oh, we're just physical Volcarona. Who cares about the speed with the Quiver Dance when you're getting bulky? We're just physical Volcarona doing the same things like the Giga Drain or just our natural stab damage and then some sustain on boosting offense and defense. Is it better than Volcarona? Maybe. Volcarona's been very underperforming in Generation 9. So yeah, you have that. But like I said, if you're in a more meta that needs that setup, that needs that extra durability to where you get into that bulk up, your Citrus Berry, you go into that second bulk up, well, now you have all the damage you need, that extra durability, and then even against special attackers, they're doing 80% to you, well, you hit them with the Leech Life, and then you get half your health back. Sounds good on that one shot. Now, I was thinking about the bug fighting typing, and then I realized, oh, we're also Buzzwool again, and set up bulk up Buzzwool was really good in Generation 7 and has a lot of moments of being really good. And now that you can get rid of those weaknesses, yeah, that's going to be something to play into. Now, like I said, Terra Bug is solid on its own. Maybe you run something else like the Terra Water or some kind of other Terra type. You go into Terra Electric because as a bug type Pokemon, you have ground. So you're not just going to go, this thing's going Terra Electric and I'm going to predict that with an Earthquake. 
if they get that on you, which will never happen, and I will say it again, it will never happen, they deserve the win in this situation where it will never happen. So you can actually just kind of go Terra Electric, go off that flying weakness into a resistance, and then even if they somehow have a ground follow-up, you're getting the bulk up, so the Earthquake doesn't matter. So I think that's, like, okay to do. And then Fire Psychic Fairy, a little more weaknesses than you want to see on setup. But yeah, it's like if Buzzswole could not have all the weaknesses it has. That's pretty scary. That's definitely worth running. Now, is there another way to run Slitherwing? Oh, man. It's just Generation 9. Generation 9 has regressed into wall breaking because everything is too tanky and hard to get rid of. And even with wall breakers, they can still fail into things like Dondozo, Garganasol, Clodzire, Toxapex. We could just make this video list Blissey, Corviknight. We, we could just list these things off forever. So Slitherwing, it's, it's that. What does it bring that other Pokemon don't? That's kind of the question. 81 speed on a wall breaker. Yeah, there's faster wall breakers. There's also comparable attack wall breakers. Garchomp, I, like, it's weird because I don't think Garchomp was ever good, like, in Generation 4 when the losers at Smogon banned it. Uh, Scarf Chomp is always just, like, super low on damage. There's been times where people are running, like, Banded or Sash Swords Dance Garchomp, and it felt okay. But, like, right now, even though Garchomp isn't getting a lot of play, it actually might be in its strongest form as some kind of Swords Dance, Anti-Stall, or just a Choice Band run everything over with your 102 attack, and it has the natural bulk to where you don't have to give up anything into the hit points or find a speed tier. You just go max attack, max speed, Jolly Nature, and then crush everything on Stab Earthquake. So Garchomp's in a really weird position for, like, Choice Banded Wall Breaking, which means what does Slitherwing bring in comparison? Well, 81 speed means you need to dedicate a lot into Speed Creep, I'm saying at level 50, you kind of want to find that 113 range. It's going to cover you for Glamora, Golden Go. It's also going to cover you into low speed creep Annihilates. If you haven't realized it by now, the game is ugly. So ugly, we're probably around here. Go here to be safe. Aw oh, man, we're cutting some of our durability. Probably doesn't matter because of, like Leech Life healing us up. And now we're just strong. You go Terra Bug, Leech Life, Choice Band you're still one-shotting things, because it's a 135 attack banded Pokemon with the Adamant Nature using Stab. You Terra for good measure, and then you're just winning. And maybe that's where we just bring out the booster energy, and now we have this, but on Life Orb, but is still finding KOs, because Terra Bug makes up for the not being choice banded, and then you just still go into the Leech Life, and now you can actually go off of that into the coverage that you need. But then you look at this, and you realize, wait, we're just Iron Hands, and I said that Iron Hands probably ends up being pretty good if you go Terra Fighting into the Drain Punch with the Booster Energy or the Choice Band, and then you actually just have more natural bulk on the Iron Hands, so that probably turns out better, but then like the speed gets weird. That this is outspeeding in those tanky, bulkier matchups to where, oh, what's the trade-off here? Is losing that insane amount of durability actually just better? Because now you hit a great wall-breaking speed tier, and then you catch a lot of other weird 70s and 80s Pokemon, and then, like, you're fine? Maybe. Maybe you do this. Maybe the game is that ugly. I don't know. I'm kind of scared to find out, but maybe you want that. And then you're just kind of doing the same things with the Leech Life, the Earthquake, um, in that Iron Hands video, I said the close combat feels bad, and that's kind of what drew me to the parallel in this video, but if it's the finishing blow on the last opposing Pokemon, that's better. If they have tanky Pokemon, it means less chance that they outspeed you, so you're not feeling that minus as much. Uh, you can still run Brick Break, Body Press doesn't give you anything here, Low Kick... I don't know, it, it, it's a yes and a no on low kick, because sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to slap out most of the weaknesses here and it doesn't matter. Then sometimes you just get that light Pokemon and it doesn't feel good. Low sweep, though. I think low sweep is better than the close combat, because it brings a lot of that good utility to where if they're outspeeding you, you low sweep them, now you outspeed them, you low sweep them again, potentially, and that's effective 130 base power, or like you follow that up into a leech life to then get the finishing blow and heal the damage you took while setting up the low sweep, and it's like having a close combat worth of damage or more. 
So maybe you just do that instead. And it has utility to where if Slitherwing can't take out the Pokemon and maybe it's still too fast, like you low sweep it and you still get outsped, but then that opens it up for a faster Pokemon on your team to then take out their Scarf, their speed boosted Paradox Pokemon. Okay, like their booster energy or whatever. That could actually kind of bring that utility to help win the game on top of also just having threat with the low sweep. You low sweep a King Gambit, it doesn't matter. I, yeah, I think it's too fat to one shot on the leech life. So yeah, like it's just there for that little bit of tech and the four X's or the very specific two X and that's going to be fine. Zen headbutt for coverage because that's kind of it. I don't know if you go insane on the flame charge. Like I guess flame charge close combat instead. But it's, yeah, like you can, you can do some cute stuff here for the last two because leech life earthquake is going to clinch a lot and it's mostly just one shot leech life and then coverage the rest so having that plus one speed oh now it's just weird now it's just now it's just wild and, and this pokemon's kind of popping off so slitherwing another pokemon to keep an eye out for for real and that's just another thing about generation nine the players make the game so much worse these timmies thinking palafin is good sticking to their iron moth and volcarona when they're just not that great same thing on the Dragapult and all that. Now, there's still really ugly parts of the game. Like, I don't know how this does into a Dondozo. I mean, like, the Terra Bug Leech Life and all of these stats into outspeeding a Dondozo, you probably win. You just need to get through that first Chesto Rusto and then you can KO it while it's asleep. And it probably doesn't do too much back to you unless it gets that Fissure, in which case the Leech Life doesn't matter. So, yeah, I guess you just kind of RNG into that one. So, two thirds of the time you'd be a Dondozo and then maybe you don't have to worry about anything else. There's some option here, but yeah, I think like Leech Life just is the hard winning play. So even though Lunge is really good, doesn't really find too much of a place. And then stuff actually Trailblaze over the Flame Charge because it gets that. And then maybe this. I don't know, don't sleep on it is what I'm trying to get at. This Pokemon's like crazy. So guys, enjoy the video. Hope you learned something. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.